This is Ellie, and we're talking today about Father Pavone. And in recent videos, I showed you how Bishop Zarek was behind this dismissal. In fact, in the letter, it says that Father Pavone was disobedient to his bishop. This Bishop Zarek of Amarillo, Texas, wanted him dismissed back in 2017. He told Father he was looking for him to write his dismissal as a priest. This is outrageous and horrible, what ha is happening in our church. And I bring to light, they were going after Father Pavone. They weaponized his tweet. Well, what about the tweet from Mariana Muzicato, who runs the Pontifical Academy for Life, who says we should reinstate Roe v. Wade? Or how about the tweets from Archbishop Paglia, the Pontifical Academy for Life, who said abortion is a pillar of society? What kind of junk is that, that Law 194 is a pillar of society? Why are we going after this priest who's trying to stop abortion. But this Pope that we have right now supports the people like Mariana Musicato, who wants Roe v. Wade reinstated. And he supports Archbishop Paglia, who says that Law 194 is the pillar of society. Well, here's a video clip from recently from Father Pavone in which he emphasizes again the jealousy that the cardinals and bishops had against him and the cancel culture that is within the Vatican that's going on. Uh, you know, these these bishops um, got some of them nervous that oh, they weren't controlling Priests for Life, the finances, the messaging, the influence over the Catholic pro-life movement and beyond, as you just described. And uh, they started making moves to restrict my ministry. Now, if I wanted to summarize it in three simple points, you tell me if this makes sense. At first, they tried to say, well, Father Frank, you got to go back to parish work now. You've worked long enough in Priest for Life. And that was Cardinal Egan of New York in 2001. And I said, with all due respect, I believe this is my vocation. That's what, what I went to Cardinal O'Connor about. This is not just an assignment. This is a vocation. I want to give my life for the unborn. It's as simple as that. And you don't give your life for something and then take it back. Uh, please, I want to do this work. Okay, so th it wasn't just me pleading. It was an uproar from the from the people who were supporting Priests for Life. And ultimately, we reached a solution where he gave me, technically, he gave me a parish assignment in a place where they didn't need me. Uh, so I was going to be able to continue leading Priests for Life. Okay, so first they tried to take me away from Priests for Life. That didn't work. So then they started to try to take Priest for Life away from me. And you'll remember this. There was a period of time, about a decade ago, where uh, they tried to start questioning well, the finances of Priest for Life. This is a favorite tactic of the other side. You know, you want to discredit someone, call their finances into question. Well, that didn't work either because we kept sending them clean audits that we get from our annually from our independent auditing firm. And uh, the Vatican itself looked at our finances and said they were in good order. So that didn't work. So if they can't take Father Frank away from Priest for Life, and they can't take Priest for Life away from Father Frank, maybe they have to take the Father away from Frank. And that's this move that they're just doing now. And all of it is motivated by the same thing. It's a cancel culture within the church, just like we see in politics, it's a weaponization of otherwise legitimate processes in the church against ideological opponents. It's an effort to blunt the impact of this ministry on the church. Although, despite the fact that we're helping the Holy See, to this day, we very substantially help the Pope's mission at the United Nations, the Holy See mission. We very substantially help the Secretariat of State in international pro-life matters. We run, as you know, the largest ministry for healing after abortion. We're helping the clergy. We're, we're mobilizing the people. So what about all this good work do they, not, do they not support? There are some that have a problem. They need to explain for themselves what it is. But this, in a nutshell, is how uh, and why uh, we've gotten to this moment now where they're saying, oh, you can't be a priest anymore. Yeah, one of the interesting things, I mean, I've, I've read almost everything I get my hands on, I've scoured the internet, is the detail that there is no appeal for you. Ah! Is this canonically even possible that we've made this decision and there is now no appeal? Well, Taylor, I'm glad you bring that up because a lot of people are, are concerned about that. As you know, canonically, 
uh, the Pope is the highest authority, the highest human authority in the church. So if you get a case that's signed off by him, there's no technical canonical appeal. But that doesn't mean it can't be changed. And, and see, this is the distinction that, that people need to make. Of course it can be changed. What the Pope does, the Pope can undo. And that's that's the approach I'm taking right now. My next step is to say, to make an appeal personally and directly to Pope Francis. The, everything that's happened so far has gone up through the congregation or the dicastery for clergy. Okay, fine. There's the canonical processes. It ends with the Pope. But then you go back to the Pope personally and say why you, 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 you ask him to change this. Uh, and my reason is very simple. I want to continue being a priest and continue being a pro-life leader. And there's a whole bunch of people out there who think that the same thing should 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 be. Uh, secondly, if let's say this pope doesn't agree to change that, there's going to be a pope after him. And you can be sure that on the first day that new pope is installed, he's going to hear about my case. So there is a story from Father Pavone and that he's going to try to appeal this with Pope Francis. And if he can't appeal it through him, he's going to go through another pope. And my thoughts are that it may take a warning from God, the warning that's supposed to come uh, prophesied, to bring the church back to the Ten Commandments and reinstate these canceled priests. Father Pavone is one. There's also Father Altman. There's also the other canceled priest, Father Kulchik. And we know the stories that they have which they were also in similar situations trying to stand for traditional values. And like, again, I say, why are we, why is Pope Francis supporting Father James Martin? Why is he supporting people like Mariana Muzicato, who retweets and retweets that we have to reinstate Roe v. Wade and get abortion rights back? Why does Pope Francis support Archbishop Peglia who says abortion is the pillar of Italian society, Law 194. Are we blind to see what's going on in the church? I can tell you for certain, even though people are not aware of what's going on in the church, is, church, God is aware of what's going on. And he's going to bring a warning soon to correct the conscience of mankind, to correct the conscience of the bishops, cardinals, and the pope. He's going to bring possibly tragedy with the warning. But I want to get back to, again, to Father Pavone. And I thought of uh, the story of Joseph in the Old Testament when his brothers took out of jealousy, stole his robe and threw him in a pit. A similar thing has happened to Father Pavone. He's like Joseph from the Bible. His brothers, like the bishops and cardinals, out of jealousy, out of jealousy, these people have taken away his priesthood. Have, are trying to destroy the priest for life because they have an agenda. And I've told you that agenda is sodomy and abortion. But this agenda will not stand because God's church, as Jesus promised, will never be destroyed. 